Chicago State University Certificate Controversy. Peter O.B. reacts and APC fires back. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party during the 2023 general elections, Peter Obi, has addressed President Tinumbu's certificate saga in a press conference. Obi called on President Tinumbu to come out and clarify the controversy surrounding his identity and academic records at the Chicago State University. He also spoke about the international embarrassment the incident has brought on Nigeria stating that the certificate issue has affected the average Nigerian within and outside the country with others seeing every Nigerian as a froster, certificate forger, and identity thief. He affirmed that the people of Nigeria deserves to know for certainty the true identity of their leader and this overrides whatever rights he may have to personal privacy. He ended the press conference saying it's time to do the right thing. Chief Paula Ahmed Tinibu's many other lingering identity question marks have further worsened Nigerian less than glorious image internationally. Uninformed outsiders now see every Nigerian as a froster, certificate forger, or identity thief. The controversy is unnecessary, just as the implicit global embarrassment could have been avoided. In my opinion, Chief Paula Ahmed Tinibu should have saved the nation and himself this protracted embarrassment and undo sight. Even in this late in the day, however, Chief Ahmed Bola Tinibu still owes the nation and the world a simple debt of obligation only he can discharge. I therefore respectfully and humbly call on him to immediately and personally mount the restroom of his present high office to perform a simple task once and for all time. He should reintroduce himself to the nation he governs and to the world for avoidance of further doubt. He should let the world know his name, his nationality, his place of birth, his parentage, the primary and secondary school he attended with dates as well as the actual universities he attended and certificates obtained. He should okay. indicate clearly where and when he did his national youth service. In addition, if at any time he has had a change of name, he should state so clearly and circumstance that is never in self is no crime. This is a simple tax that will take only a few minutes. It requires no affidavit, prolonged court process, spokesperson, agents or surrogates. The tax is one that only Chief Bola Tinibu himself, through a direct personal statement, can perform. He must perform this tax urgently in order to lay to rest was and for the last time the many lingering doubts and valid speculation about his true identity. That was a clip of Peter Obi addressing the World Press Conference yesterday regarding uh, his opinion about how Nigeria has been brought into a form of infamy by what he believes to be uh, the seeming uh, the seeming darkness around 
the personality of the president. But we have joining us today, Dr. Yunus Asali Sutanko, chief spokesperson of Dati Presidential Campaign Council 2023 presidential elections, Labour Party. Uh, Dr. Yunusa, good to have you on the program this evening. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening. Good evening, Lagosians, and good evening, Nigerians. Dr. Yunusa, what could have instructed uh, what your principal did yesterday? It was uh, somewhat out of context. The case, as we speak, is at the Supreme Court. Was he yesterday trying to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner? Why would he have to go do that when ordinarily he has professed repeatedly that he respects the rule of law? As a Nigerian who believes in the rule of law, it would be very, very unhealthy of him not to have responded to the clarion call of Nigerians and for him not to intercede in what is called a national disgrace. For an aspirant candidate for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and an issue that disparage, causing disdain and disrespect to the country he wished to govern, it is very, very apt for him to have come up and contribute to the debate about the issue of forgery, infamy, perjury, and all that could have caused Nigeria a lot of disgraceful position. And that is the reason why it was becoming very, very important for him to come up and speak to the nation and speak to the person in question in respect of Chief Bola Ahmed Tinubu for him to rescue the country. Uh, uh, hello, the Dr. Yunusa. Doctor, yes, I, I guess you know the difference between alleged and proven. You are using words like forgery, you are using words like disgrace, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh, does Dr. Yunusa not know the difference between a prima facie case of forgery, proven through a process of law, and an allegation of forgery, which Ever way you want to, however much you want to believe that is forgery, until it is established by a court of competent jurisdiction, it is still an allegation. Am I right about that? Thank you very much. And I'm glad you heard me very well. I did not accuse. I only said the issues of debate on the public space about disdain, disparage, disrespect, in which issue of forgery is being put on the person of Chief Bola Ahmed Tenubo, of course, as you said, until when proven guilty. And that is the reason why it became up for a person of Peter Gregory Obi to call on the president in court to come out and clear the air and make this particular issue a thing of the so, past. So out. for somebody like you, uh, for somebody like you who is supposedly who i want to believe is this erudite you, you it didn't occur to you to tell him that in so much as the case is still undergoing the process of law that what happened yesterday could have could have been seen to be sub judice nobody in your no. team ever thought of that and told him not to do it more so because you know that the process is yet to be concluded and what you did yesterday was more like pandering to the uh, to those who are in the X sphere, the the Twitter sphere. What how would you respond to that? We even encourage him, I in particular encourage him to come onto the rostrum to speak to the Nigerians. And I say this with a lot of passion and patriotic zeal in me. If a person of Peter Obi will keep quiet at this particular point in time when we need noble men 
to ask on our president to clear his name, I don't think that is out of context, neither is it in, uh, in under out of issue of judicial contention. You could remember very clearly, while he was making a statement, issue that concerns the court proceeding, he did not respond to it. And if you watch him carefully, all the time, Peter will be never and will not interfere in the issue of processes of the court. What he did yesterday was simple act of a citizen asking those who are in position of power to come clean and that was why I was uh, especially to especially a citizen who has the bone to pick a legal bone to pick with the person he was supposedly advising because as it is for any rational human being who think that given what he did yesterday uh, he presupposes to him that the Supreme Court, uh, the, that, the le that the case at the Supreme Court is somewhat superfluous or necessary and could, uh, would amount to no, no, no uh, relevance. Would you have accused Alaji Atiku Abubakar of making the same position in a different light? All of these men. What, what do you What do you think of what Alaji Atiku Abubakar did when your party immediately, even when Alaji Atiku Abubakar called for a united position from your presidential candidate and the presidential candidate of the NM, uh, NM, uh, uh, PP, your party deliberately came out and said they were not interested in joining. Joining forces with Alaji Atiku Abubakar, and yesterday it seemed like a presidential candidate recalibrated and betrayed the declared position of your party. You don't think there are inconsistencies what? in your ranks? What? what you saw yesterday was an answer to that particular call, and Peter Obi made it clear because you cannot at any point in time ascribe. Peter will be rejecting any of the call that was made in, by Aladdin Atiku Abubakar. What he said yesterday was that you don't even need to be invited for you to fight for your country. You don't need to be told or requested before you can be involved in trying to emancipate this country. These two gentlemen should have been clapped for, even by you sitting on this other side, to say, well done for even calling on Mr. President to so, come and So, so you, are saying, you, are, you are saying indirectly, sir, that uh, what he did yesterday amounted to the fact that he did not quite respect the position of the party that much. That he is no. a, a one-man riot squad, would move in any direction he wishes, even against the position of, the declared position of his party. Because I remember that after the article exhortation for the parties to join him, Labour and NMPP, the party came out to frontally say that they were not interested in joining forces with Atiku. So has he now recalibrated to join position with Atiku? I'm sure you saw the national chairman of the Labour Party on seats. I'm sure you saw the deputy national chairman of the campaign organization from North, Aladdin Audi Abu Mohammed, on seat. I'm sure you saw Senator La on seat. I'm sure you saw the national publicity secretary of the Labour Party right in that particular hall. My humble self, I was right in that particular hall. That is to tell you the unison in that particular regard. In this case, whether you ask Peter Obi, and Peter Obi now publicly have told you, those who are doubting that, look, there is no even need for anybody to even call you into it. You must, as somebody who is speaking, for uh, speaking the of the president, speaking of, in that uh, uh, doctor, oh, yeah. speaking of those who partook in the World Press Conference yesterday, you, you are right to have noted that uh, uh, the chairman of your party, of your the, the chairman of the faction, or the factional chairman of your party, uh, Barrister Abure, was was present truly, but was it not a bit of an irony to somebody of uh, Peter B. stature and some of you were in the awe? Oh, was it not a bit of an irony that Abure 
was taken to court for forging document. The court, the court instructed the police to investigate the allegation of forgery against Aburi. The police came out to say, truly, some documents, some party documents were forged by him. Although the police is not a court of competent jurisdiction, but the same Abure was sitting behind or around the Peter Obi who wanted a, an elected president of the, of the country to resign because of allegation of forgery. What an irony. Does, it, does, the, does the paradox start come for you now? I am happy that you mentioned just now that you cannot you cannot accuse anybody until until that is proven proven. This is your word, and now you are contradicting yourself in trying to accuse or ascertain that Abure was found wanting with issue of forgery. This has not been proven, neither has it been adjudicated upon. The matter is still subjudice. But here you are making those particular allegations. So you have contradicted yourself in this regard. There was no, in con this, in this there was no contradiction there. Yeah, I said, although a police report does not amount to a conviction by a court of competent jurisdiction, I mentioned that. <laughs> but the irony is that in the case of the person that your presidential candidate was also saying that he, he should resign his office, in the case of forgery 2 has not been proven by a court, the alleged case of forgery 2 has not been proven by a court of competent jurisdiction. So he could sit with somebody who, has, who forgery has been alleged against, but he was calling somebody to resign his position because forgery has been alleged against him yet to be proven too. Do you see the inconsistency I don't, the, the, and the paradox? I don't know where you get the copy of the statement that Peter Obi read. From what I saw that you just read out and what I know was written, there was never or anywhere Peter Obi called for the designation of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. I remember to be corrected. You can confirm. Uh, so that you, means you, 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 you want the clip to be replaced for you? You are misleading the public as you speak. Because Peter Obi never, ever said that Tinubu should resign. What he said was that Bola Ahmed Tinubu should come out publicly to clear his name and save Nigeria the disgrace that has already been put on Nigeria for the issue of forgery. But never did he say that Bola Ahmed Tinubu Bola Ahmed just like Sanisu Muhammad Buhari did in 1999 when Chief Ganifa Wahimi took the both issues to court to Buhari resigned. Well, I don't know what honor means anymore now. Even the issue of integrity, I don't know whether it has any value because people are trying to shift the issue of integrity and value aside and gratify mediocrity and cheating, forgery, and all whatnot, which has already been established either by you or by any other person who believe that probably what Peter Obi did called on Bola Ahmed Tunubu chief Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to clear his name by telling Nigerians, one, which primary school did he go to? Two, which secondary school did he go to? What is his name? Where does he come from? Which state does he come from? Which university did he go to? What, uh, what is the LYNC, whether he served or he did not serve? This will only help Bola Ahmed Tunumbu to put this matter to rest. I know you are a lawyer. I'm, a I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just, uh, I'm just oh. a citizen like you, not a lawyer. I, I'm okay. not learned. I'm educated, all, just like you. Are just simple Nigerians who have gone through the four corners of the of school. We went to primary school. You can attest to your own. I can attest to my own. You went to secondary school. I can attest to my own. You can attest to your own. 
why can't the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria do a simple exercise to clear the air? It will save us and save him from the level of the disdain and the name calling that already Nigeria has been. This is just the simple thing that Peter Obi did yesterday. Doc, uh, what will be your final words uh, for my, this interview? My final is simple. Please and please, for all of our erudite speakers, for all of our learned persons, for all of our uh, technocrats, for all of the common men on the streets, let us save Nigeria. This is not about tribe. This is not about religion. This is about the integrity and the sovereignty of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If today, Chief Bola Ahmed Tunubu can easily tell Nigerians his details and where he comes from, all of us will queue behind him and ensure that he has a successful tenure. But anything under that, please take the honorable part. Thank you very much. Still on the press conference by the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, asking President Bola Tinumbu to clarify if he indeed changed his name at any time and saved the country from what he called an international embarrassment of identity crisis. Members of the All Progressive Congress, APC, have taken a jibe at Peter Obi, saying he's seeking cheap media attention, cheap quote unquote. Joining me as we continue this conversation is Biodu Shoumi, a public and political affairs commentator or analyst. It's a pleasure having you on the on our set, although virtually, Biodu. Thank you for having me. What is your take of the press conference that was held yesterday by the 2023 presidential candidate of the Labour Party? Well, I actually listened to the old press conference and I read the press um, statement a number of times, wondering what Peter will be want to achieve, you know, with the press conference. Um, you keep up conference, just national press conference addressing Nigerians does not matter. The issue is, you know, it has gone to court uh, rightly under democracy as a society right to go to court. Um, so also um, other opponents like Atiku, they've gone to court. What we need to do is to allow the courts to go through the processes and ascertain uh, the veracity of their claims in their petitions. Um, we've had a court of first instance, in, in this case, the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal. I've examined it and found no merit. And the next step is um, Article decided to prove for that, taking the case to the United States of America. Now, no longer talking about whether he won election or didn't win the election, changing the goalposts from what he pleaded at the court of first instance, you not know, to um the issue of his mother his back place, his uh, name or no name and all that uh, for me which are not material to the case before the supreme court more or less in my view what obi has done just as particular who has been doing is to engage in a form of media trial and for me is an express expression of frustration over the loss of the case um at the uh, court of assistance uh, in addition to losing the election, according to INIC's um, official results. So when you look at those situations, if an issue is pending before the court, it is just right to allow the court to examine it impartially. Our judiciary are capable, you know, they, 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 all the courts are capable, you know, of um, embarking on a fair hearing of cases. When we embark on media trial, like what we did, is to appeal to emotion. Rouse people's a, a, a sizable, a, a, a sizable percentage of uh, uh, Dr. Peter Obi's supporters don't really believe that the judiciary uh, can be fair, and they don't. Re from some of the comments, you know, in their in their uh, kind of bubble bubble group, you know, uh, digital bubble groups. And if you read some of the comments, they don't quite have uh, a, a pronounced degree of faith in the judiciary 
or the judicial system. So maybe what they did, what he did yesterday was as a result of the seeming frustration with the judicial system and uh, his conviction that uh, the, pre the opacity about the president's background uh, may be bringing Nigeria into some degree of uh, dispute internationally. As somebody who lived once, as somebody who once lived in the diaspora, uh, are you getting this kind of feedback from your friends in the diaspora? Uh, honestly speaking, the views from diaspora uh, seems to be mixed. Um, you have some people who call themselves um, supporters of Peter Obi, insisting that, yes, um, he lost the election, but that Tinubu uh, was not qualified to contest that election. And I, the question I keep asking is, are you able to determine that? Um, are you the electoral pa pa panel? Are you the uh, APC party or you are the courts in Nigeria? And they kept saying they don't have it in the court. You know, it's for me, I will share Wale Shoinka's um, sentiments, um, particularly his own expression of um, clicking fascism into our national life um, in, in this aspect. Because no matter what, the judiciary is the final arbiter in any dispute. Nobody should say, except a case goes my way. Uh, but you will agree with me, uh, you will agree with me that in their sheer iconoclasm and maybe in their sheer frustration, even uh, the, the very highly esteemed Professor Wale Shoinka is being lambasted and being lampooned by, by, by these people because they, they feel that he is sounding, although uh, it, it did seem that Professor Wale Shoinka was initially supporting Peter Obi, but for him to have resigned to the fact that Obi lost the election, they see him as a, as a traitor. How would you yes, respond to that? Yes, the, of that view, for me, is a form of intellectual toggery. Uh, what is really going on on social media? When people <coughs> decide to embark on media trial, if they don't share your opinion, then you are lambasted even for holding that opinion. In some cases, many people felt stifled, unable to express their feelings, simply because they don't want to be abused. This is not the way to go, obviously, and Wale Shoinka has been trying, you know, to highlight that, even though he was, or is still a supporter of P2P, I don't know. Um, but the fact of the matter is, when you talk about freedom of expression, it's not one way. It's about you hearing what you want to hear and also hearing what you don't want to hear it should never be a one-way traffic where except you agree with certain you know uh, trajectory or you follow that trajectory uh, then uh, you you don't have a right to exist or you don't have a right to hold that opinion or you get bullied into silence that should not be the case but i can see what obi is probably also trying to do more or less, because don't forget that many people from diaspora contributed a lot of money, including in Nigeria, uh, to support his campaign. They genuinely, I want to believe, you know, uh, believe in him. And because of that, he needs to start explaining situations to them, um, one way or the other. He's taking the case, his case away from the realm of legal, you know, to the realm of emotions. There's and a question, there's a question that they often ask, and that question cannot be discountenanced by any fear, uh, any fear person who is probably following the, they, they, they will just they ask you, what do you as a Nigerian feel about the seeming opacity of, somebody asks me, but if I ask you, you know, which primary school did you go to? I said, Nigeria Model High School, Nigeria Model Primary School, I like an idea though. Which secondary school did you go to? Nigeria Model Primary, Nigeria Model Secondary School, Alaka Idioro. You know, which uh, institution did you go to? And so, uh, do you as a Nigerian also feel that they may have a point? That at some point, you know, this issue beyond Chicago State University, this issue ought to be frontally addressed by His Excellency. Yes, there are, there are two issues there. The first one is whether I feel embarrassed by it. No, look, this is the nature of politics. It's all a game of politics. You remember 
uh, uh, Hillary Clinton's, uh, no, sorry, um, um, Bill Clinton's case over Mon Monica Lewinsky's scandal, all they simply wanted was to score a point, political point, not really to remove Clinton uh, by impeaching him. They impeached him but refused to remove him from office. It served their political purposes and they were able to get the Republican Party back to power in the United States. In the same way, you remember when uh, Obama came into being. The Bartha, the Bartha, the Bartha controversy. So, Absolutely. Uh, okay, Absolutely. let me let you round up. Let, let me let you round up now yeah. by giving your uh, closing remark on, on, on this particular issue. Yeah. yeah, so when you now actually look at the case pleaded by OB, what should we be addressing? You have gone to court. You pleaded, you won the election. You did not raise the issue of Tinubu's part. Must Tinubu now produce his mother? Then you now ask him to go for DNA? They raised the issue of um, his qualification. That has been trashed out, you know, by Chicago State University. They even deposed to an oath to that effect. So each time they keep shifting the goalpost, and as far as I see it, they have lost if the election has been won and lost, and therefore those who have lost the election should won. Get ready. If they cannot push their case through the courts, we should not go to the level of being intolerant. In reality, what Peter will be an article what both of them are doing is actually what is um, damaging the image of the country. It's not actually whether um, uh, the courts are... Uh, Thank, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much for uh, a very engaging, uh, intellectually robust session. We really appreciate uh, you guesting on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure, Dollars.